And then I said, how about you join the replication squad? All you gotta do is click the little bell and you'll be part of it, please. What if White Diamond isn't on Homeworld? What if White Diamond is Homeworld? Let's talk about it today on Crystal Clear. Hey guys, Ostrich Fox here. Today I want to talk about something interesting. Now usually on Crystal Clear, I stray away from taking recommendations on theories to cover. I usually want to talk about what I want to talk about. However, there's a theory going around that's actually a pretty interesting idea that I want to explore. And it's pretty simple. What if White Diamond isn't on Homeworld, but that depiction we see of her in the trial and subsequently the tile cards for Off Colors and Large's Head actually is White Diamond? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Not much substance to it, but let's explore it. Because in all honesty, we really have no idea what that is. This is Homeworld and they operate differently. I mean, they have arms for ships for crying out loud. And Hershey Kiss shaped ships that fit perfectly on top of carousels. And weird overall like class Gorbonoids, giant eyes to scan planets. You get the idea. With Homeworld, there seems to be endless possibilities. So who's to say one of their leaders? In fact, the one who's being built up to be the most powerful one, the head honcho, top of the chain, is actually one with the planet. For this scenario, we're going to look at one of Marvel's cosmic beings, Ego the Living Planet, and spoilers for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 if you have not seen that yet. Now, there's various iterations of Ego, but since Guardians is the latest one, let's look at that and how we can translate that to White Diamond being Homeworld. In Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Ego is a celestial, immensely powerful beings that are some of the most oldest entities in the Marvel Universe. Their place of origin is unknown, and they're capable of virtually any effect. In the film, Ego explains that he came into existence millions of years ago, and learned to manipulate the matter around him to form such things as an entire planet around his true form and a human body. However, if his projected human form is away from the planet for too long, it will cease to exist. Ego's master plan was traveling across the galaxy, planting seeds on thousands of worlds. The end goal to terraform them into new extensions of itself, but they can only be activated with the combined power of two Celestials, and it's revealed that Star-Lord, aka Peter Quill, is indeed a Celestial. He's the only one of Eagle's offsprings to have Celestial powers. Ultimately, after a heartbreaking plot twist, Peter realizes that his father is doing something horrible, and with the combined efforts of the rest of the Guardians, saves the day. But some of these things here I think could actually work in Steven Universe. And this episode isn't so much of a theory, but rather fun speculation, because I think this is a very fun idea. Let's take the concept of Ego creating life and projecting a humanoid form, and going around on planets, terraforming them into extensions of himself. That almost sounds familiar. Let's say White Diamond is Celestial that she's actually a one-of-a-kind being, the very first gem. When Homer was created, she was created as a product of it, sentient. She could feel things. Homeworld is just one big gem. I imagine it originally looked a lot more barren, as opposed to when we see it in the trial, but just being a planet, White Diamond got very lonely. She's this all-powerful being, but just kind of exist. So she decided to create Yellow and Blue Diamond the only two gems to be created by White Diamond. And this is why they're viewed as such perfect beings. They were created by basically a god. Speaking of which, that's why when you look at White Diamond's mural, it appears that she's descending from above, having such a godly presence, because she's a celestial, and the most powerful gem in existence by default. This conception would validate Yellow and Blue Diamond's title as perfect flawless beings. There was never any risk of them coming out overcooked or defective. They were crafted from a god. Now, I imagine Soli being a planet probably got awkward fast, so White Diamond creates a physical projection of herself just like Ego. This is what is depicted in her mural on the moon base. This is the form that White Diamond assumes when meeting with the other diamonds, commanding her court, so on and so forth. However, just like Ego, if White Diamond trees from Homer for too long, with that physical form, it ceased to exist. So her time is limited with anything and everything, should she even be bothered to get involved. With it just being yellow, blue, and white, just like Ego, they wanted to spread their influence worldwide. However, just creating yellow and blue took a lot out of White Diamond. That's where the Kierkegaard Garden comes into play, where as opposed to White Diamond creating his raw power, 
They turn to resources, kindergartens, and incubating gems. Playing them in the ground and they pop out of the dirt. However, this will have an adverse effect later on. With more and more gems being made, the diamonds decide it's time to start their global dominance. With their newfound army, they go to different planets and begin colonization. I have a hunch they encountered some species that they had to engage in combat with, which is why we have soldiers, such as Amethyst, Topaz, and Jaspers. Although it's speculated that Amethyst and Jaspers originated from Pink Diamond, who we'll get to in a sec. While colonizing plants was rolling smoothly, it was a time-consuming process, and although they had all these plants under control, managing them was not an easy task. Which is how the Diamonds started falling into their own roles. Yellow commanding the military, blue being the diplomatic one, white being god, but with all these planets and all these gems, it became a bit too much just for three diamonds. They needed a new diamond. That diamond was pink diamond. The only diamond to be made from a kindergarten as opposed to being created from white diamond because white diamond didn't really see the need for a new diamond, but yellow and blue still mean something to her. She's above them, but she still wants to please them. So finding a barren planet and creating a new diamond from there was a fair compromise. She didn't actually have to use any of her power. This is why when you look at Pink Diamond's mural, she's the only diamond to be seen emerging from a planet. While white, yellow, and blue seem to be just kind of floating. From there on, Pink Diamond creates her own gems, rolls quartzes, morganites, and gets her own colony, the planet Earth. However, we know how the rest of the story goes. Rose Quartz begins rebelling, Pink Diamond gets shattered, and we have a gem war. Everything plays out up to its current point, but this is where the adverse effect comes into play. We now know that Homeworld is dwindling in resources, and that's because White Diamond isn't as powerful as she used to be. While the original Kindergarten spared her raw power, it still of course harmed the actual planet. And since White Diamond is that planet, it harmed her, it affected her. To the point where even sustaining a physical form on her own planet can be detrimental, making White Diamond's appearances even more scarce. She now has to conserve all her energy at all times. This is why she was not present at the trial. Regardless if she actually played a role in shattering Pink Diamond like many speculate, including me, or if she actually loved and cared about Pink Diamond, she either was just above the trial and didn't feel the need to project a physical form, using up her remaining energy to go and attend something that should be in the past, or if she truly does miss Pink Diamond, she actually was devastated at her loss, but had enough faith that blue and yellow could handle it themselves. Now let's say Pearl really did belong to White Diamond, or at least was on White Diamond's court at some point in time. How does that support this idea in any way, shape, or form? Well, if White Diamond truly is a planet and could project physical forms, this is something we've seen Pearl do before. Think about it, she's the only gem in the entire series so far that we've seen create projections with the Hollow Pearls. We've seen that some gems possess some abilities that seemingly relate to their diamond, so I absolutely do not want to rule this out. Again, I think it'd be more compelling if Pearl didn't belong to a diamond, but Steven Universe has proven to be an unpredictable show. It can go any way at any given point in time. Most theories are valid until the show itself proves it wrong. All of this being said, is White Diamond still an all-powerful being? Is she still the most powerful gem? Well, I want to say yes. If by chance all of this is true, or at least White Diamond being a planet that can project a physical form, even if she only comes in doses, I still believe she possesses immense power, far beyond anything we've seen. Not only could she definitely mop the floor of any crystal gems, I think she could take on Yellow and Blue Diamond at the same time, no problem. Unless Yellow and Blue fuse into a Green Diamond, then that might even the playing field a little bit. Hmm, I guess time will tell. But with all that being said, what do you think? Could White Diamond possibly be a part of Homeworld? Is she Homeworld? And my lord, when are we going to see her already? I want to hear you guys' thoughts on all this. Personally, like I said, I think it's a pretty fun idea. It's a concept I would love to see executed in the show. I think they could pull it off very well. But as always, these are just my thoughts and feel free to leave yours in the comment section below. Let's get a very interesting discussion going on this one. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please throw it a like. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button for more Steven Universe goodness and discussions on other animated shows on the way. We also launched a new show called The Bakery, hosted by Matt Baker, who designed the Roundtable website, which you should check out too. His first episode is on Game of Thrones, so if you're into that kind of thing, please check it out. Also swing by our Roundtable store on Teespring for some awesome shirts. We have Crystal Clear logos, a Roundtable shirt, some artwork by Katunis Akuro, 
And if you're feeling generous, support us on Patreon. One dollar can go a long way. And if you select our diamond tier, we will shout out your channel. Or Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, DeviantArt. If you need something pimped out, we'll do it and we'll deliver it in the best way possible. So yeah, keep that in mind. Links to everything in the description. I hope you have a beautiful day, and Austric Vox signing out. This video has been powered by Patreon. If you want to give us some more support, head to patreon.com slash roundtablevids, become a patron, and get some awesome perks. Thanks for watching another video on the Roundtable. If you want to get more involved with our community and watch videos from Let's Talk with Tom, Voxbox, and more, click the video right here. Or if you want to get some more of the animation goodness, watch some Crystal Clear or Mini Monday, click the video right here. And please, don't forget to subscribe.